Yeah. Thanks very much. Uh, thanks very much for your time, Ahesh. We're here uh, June 16th sure. at the ENH uh, facilities. Uh, Education and Healthcare Facilities uh, IEEE Committee. I asked Mahesh, what is the distinction between the existing district energy systems that are common in education facilities? And uh, I pointed out uh, Princeton has one that they've been talking about. And uh, actually, Mahesh has his own pilot, which you can talk about. So my question had to do with, uh, so uh, many cogen plants, uh, uh, follow a steam load, does some kind of a thermal load, and uh, they are generating an, an interact uh, with a utility. Uh, sometimes there's actually interactive sources like solar and wind in this, but more common solar. Um, and uh, in, at least in our case, uh, we do not have a load shedding scheme. Uh, we have a supervisory signal, a DC circulating supervisory signal that runs about uh, 20 miles between our our 40 kV bus and or our 13.2 kV bus and the Edison's uh, 120 kilovolt bus. And my question had to do with uh, how is the, how are existing campus cogeneration systems different than a, a microgrid? And, and Mahesh, uh, please, uh, if you could answer that question one more time in the detail um, for, for our colleagues to, to, to listen to. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, no, th there are many definitions of microgrids, the existing cogeneration uh, plants and the way it's constructed in the campuses. Uh, it can be called a microgrid. In fact, some of the universities are already just renaming or relabeling their uh, existing uh, facilities as a, as a microgrid. In the, that is bringing in a lot of publicity, but in the technical community, the, the people who have been working on microgrid research, they disagree with that, mainly because from the technical uh, specification point of view, microgrid uh, is supposed to be capable of seamlessly islanding and reconnecting with the main grid whenever there is a uh, outage or fault in the main grid and uh, the critical loads have to be uh, continuously supplied power uh, without any uh, uh, reliability issues uh, with high power quality and on top of it uh, we should have the ability to um, control uh, seamlessly uh, how much of uh, power we would draw from each kind of uh, generation source uh, to integrate those uh, mechanisms for, uh, based on the pricing of the different uh, sources, the availability of the different sources, uh, of energy, uh, we should be able to draw the power from those respective sources and and in order to seamlessly operate uh, and efficiently manage this uh, microgrid, there needs to be some additional uh, infrastructure uh, than what is out there right now in the campus uh, cogeneration facilities. Yeah, I wanted to stop you right there because for those who are listening to this teleconference right now, Mahesh had actually done a presentation, and one of the metaphors that I like that you used had to do with um, how uh, bicyclists and how birds will uh, separate the fluid, and uh, you had a thermoeconomic case for that. You, you used that particular metaphor of a follower and a leader, and uh, so that's covered, yeah. that's covered in uh, – and uh, I think, oh, I figure which teleconference, it might be this one. Yeah, it's this one here. So go back to May 19th for those listening to this. We've had 12 views on this uh, in, in a month. And so I hope people will find this helpful. So Mahesh's research got into the, got down into the weeds as to how you, you model the thermoeconomic cases for this. So uh, please go ahead and I'm, I'm, I'm just uh, re referring to them that you can get a, a bigger view, a, a nearly 40 minute view 
of your technical, the, the statements that you just made about interactivity and trying to approach the, uh, the what I call the speculative hype that we're seeing in a lot of uh, organizations um, where uh, we've always had what you know, a lot of organizations, as you say, are re rebranding themselves as already in the microgrid space. And what this does is it gives them the patina and the gloss of being up to the moment and such. We've been doing this all along. This is not the first time in my engineering career where a new group of people come in and they rebrand something we've been doing all along. That's what I think is happening here. So there may not be anything morally, technically wrong with that, but we need to get clear that what Mahesh is talking about here is a little bit more uh, intermediate to long term, and we should not allow our industry uh, to be approached by uh, uh, what I'll call incumbent interests um, that want to sell us the products that you know maybe we, maybe we really don't need yet, or maybe we have most, maybe we've already got most of those products already installed. So. Uh, that's my point. Uh, this is Mahesh's project here, the CERTS microgrid project. Again, uh, he has a uh, he describes that in his uh, video conference, and we just took a long shot here. We were, we were having fun with this. Every university has got some kind of a smart grid buzz going on. A lot of this has to do with the competitiveness for research dollars. We do understand that, but it does strike me that Mahesh has, has approached this from a and, and uh, just to let you know, American Electric Power is known to be the most innovative utility in our nation. Um, no, no, no organization puts more toward, they were responsible for the extremely high voltage uh, transmission lines we got running through the, uh, the eastern part of the country. So when you talk about AEP engineering, uh, you're talking about best in class. So that's why I think your contract with them it carries with it a certain amount of technical gra gravitas, uh, which I'm, uh, you know, I, I, I applaud you for. Thank you. So I guess to summarize here, uh, we'll carry carry on with this. We had more of our agenda, but since Mahesh is here, uh, as you say, we're just getting started with this committee and uh, uh, others. Obviously, people who are not able to call in um, are, are able to see these. One of the technical points, the technical economic point I'm making here is that before we go a little bit nutty, and let me see here, I'm going to go back to our Twitter site, I believe. Um, this is my, oh my gosh, I've got uh, seven new followers since lunchtime, okay. Anyway, um, I, I asked the question here, uh, is Smart Grid an example of, of, of getting the cart ahead of the horse? So uh, this, was, this was about uh, uh, the manufacturers uh, and the standards developing organizations and the, and, and, the, and the manufacturers who support the standards development organizations descending upon Congress and um, uh, keeping the buzz going on smart grid. And of course, among technical experts, uh, it may well be that most cogen systems in the United States have 80% of what you might call a, micro, a microgrid. And Mahesh can make that uh, distinction of the, the remaining 20%. So our, my, my point here, and we, 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 we try to get this across in, um, uh, in our blog here, and you will see this. Um, uh, we talked, Mahesh was actually here at this conference. This was in Calgary, and we actually had the, uh, my colleagues from the, the National Fire Protection Association call in. Um, there, is a, uh, there is a wide divergence in, um, in, in what the code is asking designers to design power systems for fire safety reasons and what the actual load is. And you'll see a number of academic papers here. I'm, I'm going to pick this one here. The principle of this, of course, is, uh, and this is my colleague from the University of Houston who is in on this paper. At the moment, uh, this load profile is pretty much what we see around the country for most commercial installations. You can see uh, this data. And if I get a little bit closer here, you're going to see that it's rare. It's rare. It's not, it's not uncommon, but it's, it, let's put it this way. Most of the, um, transformers within buildings uh, are extremely lightly loaded. And the reason for that is that the National Electrical Code requires, for fire safety reasons, that um, these buildings have their lighting load uh, size as if that load were three and a half watts a square foot, two and a half watts, uh, three watts a square foot. But the energy codes, 
energy codes are, are asking for lighting to be on the order of 0.82 and 0.9. Clearly, in the case of office buildings, which is a dominant facility class in my industry, we are oversizing transformers something on the order of hmm, four times, at least as far as lighting is concerned. And so my question is, if you were to if you had a, if your financial guys came to you and they said, you know, Mike, you've only got a certain number of choices. You know, we can do, we can do anything we want, but we can't do everything we want. So make make your choice. Are you going to do? Uh, are you going to do? Uh, uh, spend money on microgrid and taking us to so we can say we're a fully microgridded organization, or should we do something really rather unglamorous? And my recommendation would be, I may not get invited to those parties up on the hill. But I'm going to save our industry this much money, and we estimated something out of 10 billion a year. So we've detailed this particular case uh, fairly well. Uh, we we do have funding. Uh, I'll give credit. I always give credit to my colleagues at Eaton Corporation. Do, do under, does understand that this is very important uh, for the industry because they see opportunity in it. Um, other organizations would rather, and I've actually approached uh, other organizations uh, about funding this project, and um, and they understand that uh, they understand that this would cut their revenue, and so that's why uh, that's why they're not supporting it. So in any case, um, it's one of my favorite subjects, by the way. So I thought I'd, I'd close a little bit here uh, and let Mahesh talk a little bit more about what his project project is and what it would hold. Uh, if we have these other organizations here, like Illinois and Princeton and Kansas and Caltech, everybody's in the microgrid space. Uh, maybe you can explain a little bit more. You know, apart from the fact that you're working with the, the, a world class, actually, this is the best organization for engineering in the country for utilities. What more would you like to add to our to, to our colleagues who will be listening to this, Mahesh? Yeah, now there are so many players in microgrid space. Uh, the academically, almost uh, all the universities uh, working in the power area, um, but not just limited to power area. Even the controls, the communications, uh, signal processing, uh, com computer science department people are also now uh, researching in the uh, smart grid space because there is a lot of uh, intelligence um, and uh, high speed communication uh, coming into this uh, and so there is the interaction the cyber physical systems uh, they call it uh, and there are these interactions because of some miscommunication and the impact on the power grid or vice versa uh, and and so all these are uh, the latest research topics in the academia when it comes to the uh, physical microgrid that has been uh, built in these campuses, they, there are uh, experimental microgrids. They're not necessarily commercially feasible for um, deployment everywhere uh -huh. in the nation or in the nation because these are mainly up, uh, installed by funding from some federal uh, grant agency. And for ex experimentation, many equipment have been purchased and uh, integrated together to do some testing work. And um, if if you say that you know you can deploy the same kind of uh, microgrids everywhere in the nation, uh, and any commercial entity or like uh, Schneider or uh, Ethan, I don't think would see the, them as as potentially some uh, feasible options for uh, broad deployment everywhere. Uh, mainly because every piece of equipment that has been installed in these microgrids are uh, actually experimental and they are like oversized. You may say that, you know, like the transformer sizing in for the building, even the microgrid uh, components have been oversized because they are right now not sure what is the right size of uh, equipment that is needed for a certain uh, feature to be added in the microgrid. So everyone is working on optimizations and uh, the engineering 
uh, it, it's, it has to be tailored for the uh, specification and each one has their own specific uh, requirement or feature they are focusing on and, and that uh, creates the distinction. Um, and it's right now in, the, in that period of uh, uh, research when, when we are not finalized on what is the ideal combination. Uh, and, and the optimization will yield a different outcome for a different uh, uh, cost function. Mm -hmm. So th that's where we are in. We are in that uh, experimentation stage. And these are, uh, I should say, not not yet commercially feasible. Yeah. Well, that's a space I'm relatively comfortable with. Uh, what I'm not comfortable with are the manufacturers descending upon our um, our congressmen uh, who get excited about uh, about this sort of thing, and uh, and then we waste money um, when they realize that, geez, we we're, we're almost already already there. And if we are concerned with energy conservation. Uh, doing a few simple things well would help. I, I don't doubt, and I'm, not, I'm partisan for wanting to move forward. My gosh, I'm, I'm running a, uh, uh, an organization, a work group here, which is also on the edge. So I'm certainly appreciative of the need to, to be on the edge of things, but, uh, but not at the cost of, of doing simple things well. And that, that's, that's our point here. So I think we ought to be broadening the discussion. What I'll do, Mahesh, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll invite them to the next teleconference and we can we can talk a little bit more maybe I'll invite this group or I'll invite uh, somebody from I'll pick a university uh, who's in the smart grid research and I know that the deans out there are looking for available federal research dollars to keep their people busy and um, and we, we, we want to do it but we, we think that if you're going to do smart grid there are actually smarter ways to do smart grid at least from a financial standpoint and this is the one we're making the point of here, so I think um, I think we're we're all set for um, you and I can talk privately. I'm going to stop this uh, recording and thank you very much for your time. I'll have it up here in the next uh, day or two. Thanks very much, colleagues. Uh, by the yeah. way, if you're listening here, let me I'll, I'll stay on the line for a moment here, Mahesh. Our next um, when is our next? So, oh, by the way, people, we are taking papers now on this one. Um, and let's see, where do I need to go? Our next teleconference will be June 30th. I suppose I should say something about what the agenda was. Um, we weren't able to get to everything, obviously. Uh, a lot of this mimics. You, you should know that I did. I, I did put some. Uh, I did put some. Uh, I did make a proposal to the NPA this morning um, about uh, electrical safety. So um, just be aware of that. That's already on this agenda. So the next teleconference will be on June 30th. And stay on the line, Mahesh. Thank you very much, colleagues. I uh, please feel feel free to call in on June 30th.